Hey guys, this is Dave with Gazadio. Today we're gonna to be taking a really close look at the Fio K7. We'll go over what's included in the box first. Of course, you have the K7. You also get a power cord, a USB cable, and a 3.5 to 6.35 adapter. Now, as for inputs, outputs, buttons, and knobs, in the front we have a fairly large power volume will that has multicolored RGB background lighting that changes according to the audio codec you're listening to. We also have an input selector button, a gain switch, an output selector switch, a 6.35 single ended output, and a 4.4 balanced output. On the back, we have a pair of RCA single-ended line inputs and a pair of RCA single-ended line outputs. We also have a coaxial input, an optical input, a USB input, and the power input. The K7 is a desktop DAC amp combo that comes in at $199 and follows in the same vein as the K5 and K5 Pro. And in terms of price and performance, falls between the K5 Pro ESS and the K9 Pro. The K5 Pro is a little less expensive at 149. However, there are some pretty substantial improvements that I feel justify the K7's 199 price. It actually uses the same amplifier chipset as the K9 Pro, the THX788 Plus. Of course, the K9 Pro costs 799 and offers substantially increased performance along with some pretty incredible features. But the K7 is definitely no slouch when it comes to performance to price ratio. And speaking of performance, the K7 has an impressive power output of 2000 milliwatts at 32 ohms out of the balanced output and 1220 milliwatts at 32 ohms out of a single ended output. And as I mentioned before, it uses the THX AAA788 amplifier chipset and it's paired with the AK4493SEQ2 AKM DAC chip. As for the design, I like the look they went for. I think the chunky look is kind of cool. And I like how they centered the large volume wheel. Again, the aesthetic kind of follows in the footsteps of the K5 Pro, but the K7 is slightly bigger. It's basically the same height and width, but it's about one and a half inches longer than the K5 Pro. So again, it's kind of on the chunky side, but I think it looks pretty cool on a desk. Now, before we jump into the sound, I quickly want to address a very minor issue. It's at least a minor in my opinion, and that is the volume progression. And the issue is that when you turn the volume knob and increase, try to increase the volume, the actual volume increase isn't consistent. And what I mean by that is when you first start to increase the volume, there isn't much of a change. And then when you get to about the halfway point, all of a sudden the volume increases suddenly. And again, it's not a huge issue. I'm still able to get like a, a good optimal listening level. I just need to be kind of careful not to turn it up too quickly. Hopefully that's something they can correct with a firmware update. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the sound of the Fio K7. So recently I reviewed the Topping E30 and L30 desktop DAC amp combo and was pretty impressed by its price to performance ratio. And the E30 and L30 are priced at $150 each. So together that's 300 bucks as opposed to the $200 price of the Fio K7. So when we break it down and compare the internals and specifications of the two, this is what we get. The K7 uses the same DAC as the E32, the AK4493 SEQ. So there's not really a difference there, but it's at the amplification stage where we start to see the differences. The K7 
uses the THX AAA788 amplifier while the L32 uses the TI-TPA6120A2 chipset. And when you compare the two in terms of power output, the L32 produces 2,700 milliwatts at 32 ohms, while the K7 produces 2,000 milliwatts at 32 ohms. So the L32 has more power output. But here's the question, does that translate or how does that translate in terms of real world use when you're comparing the two? Also, is it worth paying the extra money for the E32 and L32? And again, is there really a noticeable difference in sound quality? And the answer to that is yes, there is a difference in the sound quality. And I don't know if it's just the THX amplifiers, I'm assuming that's what it is in the K7, but the L32 sounds dry compared to the K7. And the K7 just has a little more of an engaging and exciting sound. And I also noticed that the K7 reproduces bass with a little more authority. Now, in terms of technicalities, generally I would say that they're about equal. Again, however, the K7 seems to handle bass and dynamics better. So there, there was also the question, do I feel like it's worth paying the money to upgrade to the L30 and E32? And in my opinion, no, it's not worth paying the extra money because for me personally, I prefer the sound of the K7 over the E30, L32 combo. Again, that's just me personally. Now, of course, if you have hard to drive headphones and you think you need that extra power and remote, then that L, the E32 and L32 might be a good option for you. And again, I still recommend it. I, th I still think that it, it's a great combo. I just prefer the sound of the K7 over that stack. Now, I also should point out that I did notice a little background noise with my 2020 Andromeda's and my Zen Pros on the K7, but that was only in high gain. And I never use high gain on this, even with my headphones. I, I tested high gain, but I generally was just using low gain. And now the L32 didn't have any background noise at all in low gain or high gain. So the L30 is a quieter amplifier in high gain. But again, I didn't even use high gain on the K7, so that wasn't a problem for me. So let's go ahead and just break down the sound a little bit more with the K7, and we'll start with the bass. Now, for me, the bass aspect of the K7 was what initially grabbed my attention because I was instantly engaged from the very first song. Again, I'm not exactly sure what to attribute this to. My guess is it's the, the THX amp chips, but the bass of the K7 is very good. And again, I used the term authoritative earlier and honestly, I don't like that term. I think maybe what I was trying to convey was that it has good dynamics and impact, really good dynamics and impact. And in addition to that impact, I also noticed that it seemed like the sub bass energy kind of helped to reinforce the rest of the bass frequencies. And that's the best way I know how to explain it. Now, and as you move up into the bass and the mid bass, again, you've got really good dynamics in the mid bass and lower mids ad as well. And my initial impression of the lower mid presentation was that it leaned warm. However, while I don't think that's an inaccurate description, I think there's more to it than that because when I'm comparing the K7 to my other DACs and amps, there is that sense of musicality and naturalness that you typically get with a sound, a warm sound signature. However, you also have an ample amount of lower mid and overall mid range detail and clarity. As a matter of fact, while I wouldn't say it's the most mid range detail I've heard of this price, it comes really, really close. As for instruments and vocals, they sound very neutral as you move through the mids and natural and, and, and really nuanced. And generally, 
sound full bodied and really have good note weight. And then as you move into the upper mids and treble, the upper mids have, again, more of a neutral presentation and that carries through into the treble and upper treble as well. Now I want to slow down just for a minute and try to better describe what I feel is kind of a unique characteristic with the K7 that you normally don't hear at this price point. Now, earlier when I was comparing the K7 to the L32, I had mentioned that the K7 was more engaging and that the L32 sounded kind of dry in comparison to the K7. But here's the thing. I also compared the K7 to my Hibby R5 Gen 2, my RS2, my Aeon stack, and about six other USB DACs, and also compared to my, my higher end stuff. And again, my only guess is that it's the combination of the AK4493 SEQs and the THX AAA7888, but the K7 was generally just more engaging than the other devices. There was just a little more of a dynamic, engaging sound presentation. And again, I was immediately engaged and pulled into the music. And here's why I'm bringing this up here in the treble section because usually again at this price those types of qualities are something you find usually it's in the lower mids and bass where you find the dynamics and that kind of pulls you in but this dynamic energetic characteristic seems to carry through into the upper mids and treble and what's great is the k7 maintains that energy in the treble without ever sounding sibilant or becoming fatiguing. And you also add to that really good detail retrieval and good extension. So you've got plenty of presence in the air region. So live recordings or any recordings with that air and atmosphere are represented very well. Now as for soundstage, imaging and layering, I would say that it's also very good at this price. So again, combined with that dynamic THX characteristic, the K7 has no problem pulling me in and giving me a really immersive, engaging, again, that engaging experience. So just to kind of summarize my experience with the K7, if there's one outstanding quality that I feel kind of characterizes the K7, again, it's its ability to engage the listener. That's it. But that's a lot, especially at this price. Is the K7 gonna give you in-game performance? No, it's not, but it comes actually pretty close to my M11 Plus. I was actually pretty surprised at how close it came to that. But the bottom line is the K7 performs very well for $200, period. Now, would I recommend the K7? And the answer to that is absolutely. If you're looking for an engaging listening experience that also looks good and may save you some desktop space and money, then I think the K7 is an excellent choice and is an easy recommendation from me. So that concludes my review of the FIO K7. If you are new to the channel and you like our videos, please take a minute and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to go a step further, you can also support us through our Patreon. I will be sure and leave a link in the description. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this review. Please like this video, please share this video. I hope you guys have an awesome day.